All right, we are starting with uh, chapter eight of Romans. Uh, first, are there any questions about uh, chapter seven or even one through six uh, before we go on to chapter eight? None here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here. Can you see that? Yes. All right. Romans, alive in Christ. Uh, Romans 8 comes on the heels of the struggles and pathos de depicted in Romans chapter 7. There is only one response to the kind of spiritual warfare described in chapter 7, and that is the unconditional gospel of Jesus Christ unfolded in chapter 8. This is one of my favorite chapters, by the way, of the Bible, uh, which decisively silences the accusation of law and overcomes the assaults of sin and death. We are more than conquerors, Paul observes, because if Jesus Christ is for us, nothing can be against us. Now, this is a very, very, very uh, good chapter of the Bible. Um, and so we start with chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Would someone please read that? I'll take it. There is, therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For a law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order to that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. All right. So Romans eight, verse one, that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What is the significance of this verse in the light of the struggle that's depicted in Romans seven? I missed that last week, but okay. I'm going to pull it up here real quick. So in Romans 7, uh, particularly starting at verse 15, for I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, and that is good. Now, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. Uh, for I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and keep making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? So again, uh, the significance of 8 verse 1, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus in light of that struggle, that fighting within us, the, the, you know, the wanting to do good but doing bad and wanting to, to not do bad and doing it anyway and, and all that struggle that goes on and to the point where he even calls himself a wretched man. Um, and then we see in verse 1 of chapter 8, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
That's pretty significant, right? Mm -hmm. Better believe it. I mean, we're we're beating ourselves up. I mean, th this struggle that Paul is describing, you know, is very familiar to us. I I think because I spend a lot of hours regretting things that I've said, things that I've done. Uh, there are nights when I you know, I can't sleep because I realize how awful I have been uh, and the mistakes I've made. And, uh, and so, you know, we kind of ended with the gospel, who will deliver me from this body of death at the end of chapter seven, and then thanks be to God through Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. Um, you know, but we get a little glimpse of the gospel and now we're getting the gospel in chapter eight. There is therefore no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then he goes on to explain this. Um, what does Paul tell us about Jesus by saying in verse three, he was sent in the likeness of sinful man. Christ could have been bound by the same sinful desires of flesh as we are, but he did not submit to it. He did not allow it to control himself. He kept the law perfectly. And I think that is why his sacrifice is what frees us from condemnation under the law. And logically understanding what I'm about to say is, is somewhat impossible. This is, this is beyond logic. It gets into theologic. Um, it's, it's talking about God. Uh, but I, I often explain this when we talk about the, uh, the, the God man, Jesus, that he was man and he was God at the same time. And he wasn't just like half God, half man, as if, you know, like we are, you know, like I think of a werewolf as a half man, half, you know, wolf or something like that. Uh, or, or uh, you know, um, well, every human being is, made up of of you know uh, the you know half of their their mother and half of their father kind of thing you know or it, it's not even that it's he is a hundred percent man and a hundred percent god at the same time and again that doesn't make sense to us it doesn't make logical sense but it has to be and I, and I teach this in confirmation with the kids. I remind them, he has to be. Why? Well, first of all, he has to be 100% man. Because who sinned? Man. Man. God didn't sin. So he has to be man to pay the price uh, for sin. The wages of sin is death. He had to die and he had to be a human being fully in order for his death to mean anything he could well first of all he couldn't be a he couldn't be a you know rhinoceros or something um but he couldn't also be just you know this this kind of looks like a man um kind of thing where he's really just a you know uh you know, a uh, uh, spiritual being, but he just kind of looks like a man. He actually had to be a man in order to die and and have it have it mean anything. You know, uh, and and to actually die because you know if he wasn't you know an angel or a god or a god or you know whatever just just God, he couldn't die. But then. He also had to be a hundred percent God, and why is that? So he could save us from our sins, right? So that he could 
live a perfect life as as Jim was talking about and 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 actually fulfill the law uh, there's there's no way any of us can do that um, because we we're not God right um, and uh, he uh, he had to be you know true God in order to do that and to be able to die and rise again mm -hmm. you know to conquer death um and so uh but we're, we we get a little bit of that here uh he was sent in the likeness of man um and and it's interesting because uh there's a uh there's a little story that they tell you to to be afraid of uh when you're in the seminary uh so that you you fear the um uh, the theological interview that you have at the end of your seminary time. And I ended up not even having that in front of a whole uh, panel because during my time at the seminary, they, I think they were trying to be a little bit more um, pastoral about it. And so uh, they gave us mentors, professors that they assigned that. And I met with him and he kind of asked me questions and he then spoke on my behalf to the to the uh, uh, seminary and said he's prepared. Uh, but before and now after, they actually have a theological interview. And uh, uh, and they they told they tell you that uh, they're going to throw a real deep theological question at you. And you need to be prepared to be able to answer it. And of course, the story is, is that they're going to say it in the most technical, you know, theological, technical terms or whatever. And uh, one of them is, is explain the non-reciprocity of the second genus. Okay, stop uh, using those $64 words and we well, might understand the question. I'm going, to I'm going to explain it now for you because it really isn't that complicated. Uh, they they talk about the 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 genus or the 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 categories of the the relationship between or when, when you're talking about the divinity of Christ and the genus myostaticum basically is saying that while while the, the divine nature shares with the human nature to make Jesus perfect, the human nature, it's, not, it's the non-reciprocity, the human nature doesn't share the sinful part of it. You know, it, it, it doesn't share sinfulness with the divine nature. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. if, if he's 100% man, and they're sharing all the characteristics of those things, then, then you got a problem because then, then Jesus isn't perfect. He's born sinful. Mm -hmm. But the non-reciprocity, while the human nature or the, the divine nature shares with the human nature, uh, the human nature doesn't share sinfulness with the divine nature and make Jesus sinful. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean... That's that's really, you know, it's it's a it's a simple concept, but it's 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 theologians trying to be complicated. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, in, yes, in, re in reality, God did not even have to send Jesus to this earth to forgive us. He could have just said everybody's forgiven, but the fact he sent his son who could experience what life was like for you and me on this planet gives it a, a whole other scenario uh, that Jesus, yes, he came here and he experienced life among us, both the good and the bad parts of it. And uh, that makes a big difference too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, he, I, 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 I agree with you in that I feel like he could, he could just, as he just said, 
let there be light and there was light, he could say, mm -hmm. let you be forgiven and you, you could yes. be forgiven. Um, but, but I feel like, uh, you know, he had, he had said that, that the wages of sin is death. And so therefore somebody mm -hmm. had to die. And, right. and so, you know, he had, he, you know, I, you can go around and around about that. You know, could he have mm -hmm. just said, said the wages of sin isn't death? You know, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, he's God yeah. and he created everything. And so he's the one who sets up everything. And so I guess I'm not going to question it. Uh, but the point is, is that, you know, it's a, it's a, a depiction of rescue, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember we had a vicar one time that was trying to talk about how we wouldn't come up with this way of saving us if it was right. our if it was up to us mm -hmm. you know it, i mean saving us by killing uh, his son i mean it just and putting him on a cross it just doesn't even you know where where would you come up with this this kind of uh, a, a way of doing it um and his way of explaining or, you know, kind of getting us thinking about how uh, different uh, God's ways, you know, our God's ways are not our ways kind of thing mm -hmm. is uh, he, he told the story. He was a, a deputy sheriff for the uh, Montana Sheriff's Office. And, uh, he explained that he went through uh, training to be able to have pepper spray on his belt because every 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 uh, weapon or whatever you'd be using, you had to be trained in before you could just have that. You know, you think, well, I know how to <laughs> spray somebody in the face with a pepper pepper spray. But the, the, there's more to the training. The idea was mm -hmm. is that if you're going to carry it on your person, then then if you're trying to apprehend an assailant, they're getting you're getting very close to them. And if they if you happen to not notice that they just reached over and grabbed your pepper spray from you and sprayed you in the face and then ran away, you have to be able to still be able to apprehend that person again. Uh, and so. So you, the part of the training was you actually had to get sprayed in the face with pepper spray and then still be able to take down an assailant, you know, with, with your eyes mm -hmm. closed, I guess, and with the pain and everything else that you're dealing with. And uh, he said, after he had finished that thing, now he's got pepper spray in his eyes and he's just, you know, ah, ah, and his trainer says, okay, now what? And he says, I don't know. Give me a towel. He goes, Nope, that won't help. He says, I don't know water. Give me water so I can splash it in my eyes. Nope, that won't help. And he says, you'll never believe the solution. Put Dawn dish soap in your eyes. Mm. You know, it gets the grease out kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You would never have thought of that. Mm -hmm. But he said that was actually the solution. Uh, you know, totally other other than what you would think of and again the dying on the cross is not the solution that we would think of mm -hmm. um, but it is the solution that the creator of the universe uh had and did and and we are thankful to him for that um, because it is it means everything to us um, Anything else on, on one through four? All right. Uh, five through 17. Someone want to read? I'll take it if no one else will. Okay. Chapter, uh, verse five. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. 
but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons for whom we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and follow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Paul speaks quite a bit in this section, in particular verse 11, about the Holy Spirit living in them and us. What are some of the implications of the Holy Spirit living within us? Well, for me, it lets me know when I'm aware of my sin that I am sinning mm -hmm. and to repent of that sin and try my best not to repeat it. And the Holy Spirit is continuing to work in us continually uh, to, to, to make the right decisions, to do the right things. Um, and, and he gets the credit. I mean, you know, sometimes people like to talk about, um, you know, justification, you know, the fact that we are saved, that's all God. But, you know, sanctification, the things, the good things that we do, you know, and those kinds of things. Well, we have some part in that. Um, but I, and I think it was Luther, I'm not 100% sure about that. But he said, yeah, well, even in sanctification, we're doing about as much as the fly does on the neck of the mule pulling the cart, <laughs> which isn't a whole lot. Um, exactly. It, we're we're kind of getting a ride. Um, not saying that, that, you know, we have no part in, in the good things that we do, but it's, it's because we, we get, we get the, uh, uh, you know, we get to see, and frankly, our, our faith is strengthened when we see, you know, the work of our hands and, and how that helps other people as we're giving to others and as we're, we're helping others and, and those kinds of things. But, it, you know, there's that old Adam right there saying, you know, hey, take credit for it, take credit for it. And, and uh, you know, we're reminded by the Holy Spirit, no, no, no. Um, this isn't you, this is, this is me working in you and through you. Um, if, cause if I wasn't here, he wouldn't be doing it kind of thing. Um, how might we honor God with our bodies? To do good, to do, to, to exemplify the glory of Christ through our deeds. Mm -hmm. 
try to share and show the love of Christ to others, love thy enemy, and do to the best of our sinful abilities what Christ would do. And we are to set that example. Okay. And that's how we can bring glory to God through our flesh. I agree with you on everything you said, but I'm going to add to it. Please do. Uh, and the way I, and the way I'm going to add to it is to say the reverse. What are ways that we dishonor God with our bodies and things that we can do then to change that? Because, hey, this, this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, or it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the ways that I was doing it, and I'll, I'll give an answer to kind of start us off here. One of the ways that I was more so than I am now, I'm still working on it, but I was overeating big time. And I was way, way, way out of control. I still need to lose some more weight. Uh, but uh, I was not honoring God and with my body in the fact that I was eating too much. Um, and, and, uh, you know, and then there's, there's all sorts of things that are affected by that. Um, I'm called by God, not only to be pastor here, but also to be a husband to my wife, uh, father to my kids, you know, and, you know, the way I was going, the direction I was going was not uh, giving me a whole lot more years to do those things. I mean, I mm -hmm. was still okay. Um, but I was in a point where, you know, you know what, I, I shouldn't say that I was still okay, because I, I, I was in denial of how bad I was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, when my family and I would go to the zoo, I would find excuses to just sit and let them walk around the zoo. And that's scary because I'm mm -hmm. not even 50 yet. So that, you know, uh, and my, my youngest son is only 10. And, you know, I don't want him to be if 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 it, I can all if I at all can help it. I don't want him to be without a father. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for in the in the near future, um, you know, it is, there's all sorts of things that we don't necessarily always think about that we're that we're doing, you know, um, and uh, um, that we don't always think about the fact that that. We need to honor God with our bodies. And it's not just, okay, you're not having affairs and you're not doing drugs and you're not doing, you know, it's, sometimes it's the simple things like overeating. Mm -hmm. um, well, we're just not aware of all of our sin. There's no, no way we can be. No, and that's absolutely true. Um, and, uh, and this, this, uh, this chapter is supposed to be mostly gospel, but, you know, the, the law is still there. Um, and, uh, and reminding us, uh, you know, that we're not there yet, not this side of heaven anyway. All right. Uh, anything else on that? Um, I always love that section where it talks about uh, the adoption as sons. Um, other places, you know, we hear the 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 picture of being redeemed, being bought back. Um, but we are we are we are the children of God, first by creation, and second by this adoption. Uh, through Jesus dying on the cross for us. Uh, very similar to that redemption thing, you know, we were his to begin with, 
and then we were bought back. Now here, you know, we're his his children, and we became his enemies through sin, and he then uh, adopted us as his children, um, and uh, we are his children. Uh, and a pastor, yeah. Uh, could you uh, expound a little bit on the 17th verse where it says that we provided, we are fellow heirs provided we suffer with him in all, that we also may be glorified with him. Could you just explain that a little bit? Um, well, as Christ suffered... He's telling us that Christians will suffer um, because of their allegiance. I mean, we're, we're, we're told this all over scripture. Um, right. You know, life, life is, is not easy. And sometimes in some ways it's going to be even harder for you as Christians. Right. The Lord tells us. And, Unlike what, unlike what the, the prosperity gospel people mm -hmm. tell you, you know, some of the people, you know, TV evangelists or such, they may tell you that once you be, believe in Jesus, once you become a Christian, you know, everything's going to be perfect. They make you feel right. like, you know, uh, you know, your life is going to be like theirs, you know, with the, right. with the, uh, you know, the big house and the, and the, you know, the cars and the, you know, the jet setting lifestyle and, and all that kind of right. stuff. And God doesn't promise that. In fact, he says, it's going to be hard for you. Yeah. Um, you know, not necessarily that you will go through, you know, everything that everybody else was, but he's not promising to take that away. Not this side of of eternity and mm -hmm. and he says and, and it's going to be worse for you because you'll be persecuted because of your faith mm -hmm. um on top of it i mean if, if all you have to do is is remember job you know all the things were going bad for him and instead of helping him his friends tell him to curse his his wife tells him to curse god and die oh and his friends yeah. and his friends tell him to you know why don't you just admit, get it over with, admit that you did all this wrong and maybe God will forgive you or whatever. Wow. And, uh, and they're not help at all, you know? Um, you know, life doesn't end up being that way. And so he, he's basically telling us we're going to suffer. Um, so again, <laughs> we keep getting the gospel and then a little bit of law again. Um, but, the, but getting back to that Abba father, Mm -hmm. um, that word Abba, you know, kind of, it's kind of like saying daddy or whatever uh, term of endearment that you have with your, your parents. Um, uh, you know, we're not, he's not just our father, which is, you know, shows some potential distance. He's also our daddy. You know, he's our, he's, he cares about us and loves us. Um, and he, so, you know, you get that word Abba in there. Um, uh, any, anything else on this section? No, oh, that's that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, 18 through 27. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning 
as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we eagerly, as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Okay, there's a lot in here. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, starting out with talking about our struggles, not even comparing to our future glory. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not to say your struggles are minimal. This is not to say that you're not going through something right now. This is not to say that you're not hurting. But what it is saying is perspective. What helps you endure through those sufferings? Not only is, is Christ right there helping you through that, but he's going to take you someday to the life of the world to come, and there's going to be no more pain, no more heartache, no more anything bad, and it's all going to be good, and it's going to be better than you can ever imagine. Um, and and that, that is what helps us on those days when it's hard to get out of bed, to be able to get out of bed, to say, and to put one foot in front of the other, to say, I can handle today because I know something much better is coming. I don't know when, and sometimes I feel like it's too far off, uh, but he says it's not even gonna, it's not even worth comparing and, and sometimes when I'm wallowing in whatever I'm going through right now, whatever, whatever struggle I'm struggling in right now, and I'm wallowing in it and feeling, oh, this just really stinks, and I hate this, and I, I can't stand it, and, and everything else, and I'm not sure I can get going. And then I hear words like, as bad as that is. It's not even worth comparing to how good the life of the world to come is going to be. So as, as overwhelming as the bad is now, it's not even, it, it's like a speck <laughs> compared to how good it's going to be. Does that make sense? Yep. I, exactly. I, lo I love these words here. This is, this is so comforting. Again, we get talking about the adoption of sons in here. Um, and then creation itself will be liberated. Uh, creation itself is groaning, looking forward to the time when the, the life of the world to come, when everything will be renewed again. Um, and, and you can see that creation is groaning in, in, in earthquakes and forest fires and 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 uh, and hurricanes and all the different things that go on in our in in our uh, in our world that are part of the the world itself. Um, if you ever go someplace where there's just a lot of decay and 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 those kinds of things, it's it's creation itself groaning, waiting anticipating the time when the life of the world to come comes and everything is renewed. Um, and then we get these comforting words that the spirit helps us in our weakness. Uh, we don't even know what to pray for. Mm -hmm. We don't even know. Uh, and, and when we do pray, it's not even, 
you know, and sometimes I don't know if you feel that way, but sometimes I feel like, you know, that, that doesn't even sound beautiful. I mean, it's just, I don't even know what to pray for God. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet the Holy Spirit, uh, he, he intercedes for us and he kind of fixes it all. Um, there's a, there's a, a, a meme. Let me uh, stop sharing for a second and then I can, I can find this meme. Um, hang on. While you're out there looking, I want to pipe in here real quick. Um, over the past couple of years, I've had some down moments and everything. And at the end of my prayers, and I'm not trying to brag, I'm just saying what works for me and it helps me feel better. At the end of my prayers, I always tell Heavenly Father, I commend to you all that I should pray, trusting in your good and gracious will tempered by love and mercy through Jesus Christ, his son, our Lord. Mm -hmm. And that the prayer alone makes me feel better just saying it in those words. Well, I, I can't find this, this meme very quickly and we're recording, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to continue sharing it, but um, I, I'm not going to keep looking for it. Um, but what it is, is it's, it's one of those um, like a, a message board that we slide the letters in, you oh, know, yeah. and you might see it at a, uh, well, like at a doctor's office, they have the, they have the message board where they, where they have all the, the names of the doctors that are in there. And then the, the room number where you're going to go. I mean, it's the old, now they have all those little things replaced by uh, screens probably or, or whatever. Um, but it's, it's the kind of little message board where it has, the letters, you know, where you slide them. Our in. street sign does the same thing. Our street sign does, uh, you know, but the way, the 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 way this this uh, meme goes, it says, "Dear God," and then it's got like this pile of letters just scrambled all over the place, and they're just, mm -hmm. it just, it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't say anything. It's just letters all over the place, <laughs> and then and then the next picture or or lower on it just says dear child i know god mm -hmm. you know and and it's just it's a it's a beautiful picture of the holy spirit you know praying for us when we don't even know what to pray for mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes my prayers are dear god help mm -hmm. i don't even know what i'm praying for I just know I need help. And he knows. He knows better than we know. He knows us better. He knows our needs better than we know. Um, and, and those are, those are legitimate prayers and, uh, and the Holy Spirit makes them legitimate, if you will. Uh, and, and, and brings them and speaks on our behalf. Anything else on this section? Now we get to, as I say in here, one of the most glorious sections of all scripture, 28 through 39. And 39 is the end of the chapter, yes. I'll read if nobody cares. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his spouse purpose, okay, <laughs> for those whom we forsake, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his son in order that we might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? 
If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of, for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Is it God who justifies? Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yeah. Because of Christ's sacrifice on our behalf, no one can condemn Christians any longer. That goes back to the beginning of the chapter. There is no now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What actions of Jesus are presented by Paul in Romans 8.34 is evidence that we are free from condemnation. His death on the cross. Yeah, his death and resurrection and the fact that he's at the right hand interceding for us. Mm. The only person who has a right to condemn us died for us. I mean, it's, it's that whole thing where, you know, if we point fingers at somebody else and condemn them, we got three fingers pointing back at us, right? Well, Jesus yep. doesn't. <laughs> and he's the only one who has a right to do it. And instead, he died for us. And he took all of our sins on him. And he put his robe of righteousness on us. And so now we have no longer any ending condemnation. Um, how is thinking about the true humanity of Jesus a source of comfort to us? We've been talking about this. He's gone through everything that we have, yet without sin. Uh, he knows what it is to... to to be hungry. He knows what it is to be sad. He knows what it is to, to go through the things that we go through in life. Um, and he goes through them with us as well. Um, and so that is a, is a wonderful comfort to us. Um, the obligation spoken of in verse 12, that's going back. We are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. We have an obligation uh, to our, our fallen nature no longer has any claim on us. Uh, we are no longer obligated to obey its impulses or satisfy its desires. Um, contrary to the flesh's claim, I owe it to myself. How often do we hear that, you know, or say it to ourselves? No, we don't owe it. Uh, we, we're not we we're not debtors to the flesh. Um, you know, really, we owe God everything. Um, and how is God's predestining His children to salvation through the work of Jesus Christ a source of great comfort for Christians? Because it lets us know, even though we are suffering, we have a wonderful 
gift by this, his taking on death for us. And like you said before, we can't even imagine the glory of heaven. There's just no way we can physically, mentally envision it. We can't. It's impossible. And that's why, like you said, the speck of suffering we have here, there is no comparison. And to know that that is waiting for us because Jesus Christ suffered for us, he sacrificed himself for us, that should be our comfort as a Christian. And helps us, like I said, get up in the morning, right? Put right. one foot in front of the other and and endure because we know the best is yet to come. Going back to uh, verses 37 through 39. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. And you could add in whatever you're going through. Um, nor COVID-19 and, and lockdowns and separation from friends and family. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I remember uh, rejoicing, just being ecstatic. This is one of my favorite sections of scripture. And I was so excited after 9-11 when they had uh, a worship service uh, at the Washington Cathedral that part of the end of President Bush's speech included these words. And I remember being so frustrated and disappointed that he stopped at separate us from the love of God and didn't say in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I know why he did that. And, and I know, you know, the president of the United States is not a pastor <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and, and everything else. And not everybody in the country is Christian, but uh, it would have been a really nice thing because he really took the power out of out of that statement because the the power is in Christ Jesus our Lord and what he did for us in dying on the cross um, and uh, nothing can separate us even people flying planes into buildings and uh, you know terrorist things and riots in the streets and uh you know all the different things that have gone on in 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 uh, 2020 uh nothing can separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus anything else for the good of the group All right. So a little after 11, let's uh, close in prayer. Let's close with the, uh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art Lord, in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy kingdom, the come. kingdom come. Thy, thy will, will, be, will be, done. be done. On earth, on earth, on earth, as, earth earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day us our this daily, bread. daily bread and forgive us and our trespasses as we forgive as those, we those who pass against, against us. us. And lead us, and lead us not to temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. Us from evil. From evil. Divine for us the kingdom, kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, power and the, glory, and the glory for ever, ever and ever. Amen. 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 All right. Well, it was good seeing everyone. Yes. Uh, yes. Hey, Linda, were you able to get the uh, the uh, Advent service? Were you able to find that? Uh, yes. I, my son's helping me with it, so okay. uh, it'll be on tonight, right? Yep. yep. I'll I'll, I'll okay. have I'll have this week's on on tonight, but I still have last week's on on there. Okay. So.
Yeah, I gotta I gotta play catch up. Yeah. And, uh, Jim, did you get that link for that concert? Yeah, I have it bookmarked. Okay, cool. Yeah. All righty. Well, uh, everyone have a, a wonderful day and rest of the week, and we'll see you again next week on here. Uh, tomorrow, the elders have a meeting on Zoom, and we're going to determine exactly what we're doing as far as uh, whether we're continuing with the live stream only or you know whether we can uh open up before christmas or or whatever so we'll uh we'll be informing everybody of what's going on uh shortly so okay all righty take care god bless everybody bye god bless. Bye. Be safe. all right see you next bye -bye. week <laughs> bye 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 bye